Recently, there has been an explosion of news regarding Amazon's upcoming Lord of the Rings series entitled The Rings of Power, set to premiere September 2, 2022. The studio has been relatively secretive and slow in dispensing information about the show, but not long after revealing the name of the series, character posters were released, a Vanity Fair exclusive article also landed covering the premise of the show and character details, and during the Super Bowl, an official trailer landed. Unfortunately, with all this news and revelations, my initial excitement for this series has waned considerably. I know many who are excited for this show, however, and so I'd like to say at the start that this video isn't intended to dampen those feelings held by others. I've been covering the news and lore surrounding the series, so this is just honestly how I'm feeling right now in light of this newest information. First of all, I'd like to say that until now, I've given this show the benefit of the doubt with the monumental task of adapting Tolkien's works. There are some amazing stories set in the Second Age, and while I had a couple concerns initially, namely with the inexperience of showrunners Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne, this series is now their first credited IMDb listing after all, I was genuinely looking forward to this show. I was hoping the showrunners' professed love for Tolkien's Middle-earth would guide them as they set out on this ambitious endeavor. However, it appears this was just another example of Hollywood rhetoric. Viewers of this channel may know that I released a video a while back covering everything we knew so far about Amazon's Middle-earth series. Looking back on that video with the knowledge of what has been officially confirmed regarding the show, I now feel like I was scammed by Amazon and the production crew especially with one of Amazon's first images teasing the series with a Second Age map of Middle-earth, I was sold on an adaptation that it appears they don't even have the rights to. After the Vanity Fair exclusive was released, there was a follow-up with the showrunners addressing fans' burning questions in which they revealed information regarding Amazon's story rights that frankly left me reeling. J.D. Payne explained that they have the rights solely for The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, The Return of the King, The Appendices, and The Hobbit. That's it. They do not have the rights to The Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, The History of Middle-Earth, or any other novels documenting the events of the Second Age where this very series is taking place. With the expectation they were going to adapt Tolkien's Second Age stories, I was motivated to make a few lore videos on this channel so fans new and old alike could get an idea or become reacquainted with the timelines and events that could be featured in this new series. After hearing these comments from J.D. Payne, I can now see why Amazon was so secretive when it came to series details. This show is in fact not an adaptation at all. Instead, Amazon's Rings of Power is setting up to be perhaps the most expensive piece of fan fiction ever made. In reality, the series is based on the background information from the novel's appendices, which are intended to add greater context and understanding to the stories of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Payne continued in his explanation of their rights, saying, There's a version of everything we need for the Second Age in the books we have the rights to. As long as we're painting within those lines and not egregiously contradicting something we don't have the rights to, there's a lot of leeway and room to dramatize and tell some of the best stories that Tolkien ever came up with. I'll admit his words sound reassuring that they can't egregiously contradict things they don't have the rights to, but this whole series seems full of contradictions. Galadriel is now a, quote, angry and brash commander of the Northern Armies, hunting down the collaborators of Morgoth and Sauron, an event which did not happen in the established lore and was solely created for this series. There are other deviations as well that are in line with his comments regarding the vast leeway and room they have to dramatize Tolkien's stories. In regards to the creative liberties that they are taking with this series, what I would absolutely characterize from what I've seen so far as an egregious departure from the source material is the massive compression of the timeline of the major events of the Second Age. The forging of the rings, Sauron's rise to power, the fall of the island kingdom of Numenor, the last alliance of elves and men. These events that span thousands of years are now being compressed to a single point in time. Even the writer for this Vanity Fair piece noted this was their biggest deviation from the text. The showrunner's explanation for this was, We talked with the Tolkien estate, 
If you are true to the exact letter of the law, you are going to be telling a story in which your human characters are dying off every season because you're jumping 200 years in time, and then you're not meeting really big, important canon characters until season 4. Look, there might be some fans who want us to do a documentary of Middle-earth, but we're going to tell one story that unites all these things. The writer's lack of vision and understanding of this time period of Middle-earth is astounding. The long passage of time as events unfold is part of the story itself. It's integral in exploring the history and lives of the elves, and humans having to contend with their own mortality is a major part of the story. This explanation comes across like they simply don't want to go through the hassle of casting new actors and creating new characters as the story unfolds. And the way he rationalizes this, saying the alternative would be a documentary of Middle-earth, exposes his inexperience. The options don't have to be binary, either cramming all the major events of the Second Age together or to create a documentary. Middle-earth presents a world of nearly limitless possibilities, unlocked through the powers of creativity, knowledge, and reverence for what came before. The lore of the Artiverse is incredibly intricate, and I don't think anyone was expecting the showrunners to uphold the letter of the law when creating this show, as evidenced by the overwhelmingly positive reaction to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, which itself took several creative liberties with the source material. However, what fans do rightly expect these self-appointed stewards of Tolkien's works to uphold is the spirit of the lore. In order to stay true to the spirit of Tolkien's works, you first need to understand them, in that respect, I've become increasingly concerned given the confirmation of renowned Tolkien scholar Tom Shippey's departure from the show. The Vanity Fair piece, when speaking of the lengths Amazon went to to maintain the show's secrecy, implied that because the Tolkien academic had mentioned in an interview what the show could and could not explore, it was apparently in violation of his agreement with the studio, and as such, he was quietly and unceremoniously dismissed from the production. While the showrunners claimed that they worked in conjunction with world-renowned Tolkien scholars and the estate to make sure that the way they connected the story beats of the Second Age is Tolkienian, they also chose to no longer reveal the names of said scholars, a move I find highly suspicious if I'm being honest. The level of secrecy seems above and beyond what I feel is reasonable, and ultimately this has served only to further alienate the fanbase. I'm also getting increasingly tired of this mixed messaging from these writers and producers. I'm tired of the rhetoric. The showrunners Payne and McKay have said things that on the surface may sound reassuring. Payne has said he has been given a stewardship with this series, Tolkien's torch to carry. While I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment regarding those who take it upon themselves to expand and continue someone else's creation, what I've seen so far of the series reveals to me that they in fact are not acting as faithful stewards. Rather, as they have also said, they are attempting to tell a story Tolkien never wrote, a profoundly hubristic statement which directly contradicts his previous sentiments. But at the end of the day, I don't believe it was ever possible for them to carry Tolkien's torch respectfully with the small amount of source material they have at their disposal. This is a show based on background information, and as such, is filled with the showrunner's creative liberties to make up the difference. Why anyone at Amazon thought this was a good idea to base their series in a time frame without the rights to many of those stories they're in is truly mind-boggling. With all of these red flags, it's hard for me to see The Rings of Power becoming a timeless series living up to the name on the banner which it is under. What is clear to me is that this show will not be a faithful representation of Tolkien's Middle-earth or of the stories set in the Second Age. Instead, disappointingly, I feel that in the end, this will be nothing more than supremely expensive fanfiction. But I'm curious to know what you think about Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series in light of this new information regarding their rights. Are you excited or do you share some of my concerns? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.